So it literally, from the warning, it's going to take, God's taking it back to the warning, saying, listen guys, I'm calling you back. This is your chance, return to me, and I will return to you, America. Return to me, says the Lord. He'll keep his word. There's a scripture that you point yes. to in the book that you say is critical yes. to this yes. present moment, Jonathan. What is it? Yeah, Second Chronicles 714, which we had in our hearts, but this is the moment, which it says, you know, if my people who are called by my name, you ask, how can we turn? Will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways. I'll hear from heaven. I'll forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Now, I now in, in the Harbinger, Harbinger 2, I speak about how this scripture actually changed the course of American history more than once. One was in the time of Abraham Lincoln mm -hmm. when he called for it. And another was in the time when I, I can remember, which is about 40 years ago, when it went Carter and everything was coming collapsing. And yes. I saw a sacred gathering. People, I was part of it. I was a new believer. I literally saw a change history. Now that we're in a more dangerous time now, now we need it more than ever. But what is just before that? You know, people read that. What's the context of that? He says, if there's a plague, I send a plague on the land. Then it says, if my people. We got the plague. You know, and then it says, it says, if I shut up the heavens, you know, talking about famine, food shortage. Well, that's this year, all of the world has been that year too. Yes. And then it says, if I send locusts, 2020 is the year of the locust. They're the greatest plague Everywhere. of locusts in generations. So you got all, you only need one, you got all three. Yes. So got, the time is now. The time is critical. And the time is now. We need to do that. That's why I'm just throwing this in. It doesn't, but, but, and this may be after, it doesn't matter, but I'm calling for, we're calling for a day of prayer and repentance. Repentance, not just prayer. That's called the return. It's on September 26, if you see it before or after, but you can be part of that. But no matter when you do it, we need to be praying as never before, repenting begins with us at, for revival. What do all these recent events, by the way, have to do with an ancient <laughs> Hebrew holy day? Speaking yeah. again about ancient Israel and America. Yeah, we, we, and we, and we, we had, a, we had a, a cool show about that, but I'll just, I'll, I'll mention it for those who don't know. That is, listen, there's only once in, in human history that, that, that uh, people were told stay in your houses until because of plagues passing through the land, you know, and, and, and they, that was Israel in Egypt. Has never happened until, until 2020, the people of Israel told go into your houses, stay in your house until the morning because of plagues passing through the land. When was that? It was on the very day of Passover, but it wasn't just Israel. It was the whole world was brought into the mystery. You see, you know, we live in a culture that's saying, oh, God, the God of the Bible, the God of the Bible is alive and well. And so we were all brought into the mystery of Passover. We've all been in our homes, and it all exploded at the time of Passover. And, and it's all focused on a plague. But what's the point of Passover? The point of Passover is the lamb. The answer is not, is not science, it's not politics, it's the lamb. The lamb is Jesus. Jesus died on Passover because he's the lamb. So if we talk about a wake-up call. God is saying, listen, you, you, you've fallen away from the Passover lamb. You need him more than ever. You need to come back to Jesus, Yeshua. He's the only hope of America. Yeah, and I, I, God is, I think, pointing us back towards his son during this time. Where else will we turn? People, as you said, Jonathan, were stuck in their homes for months on end. There's a lot of despondency, depression on the rise. People are discouraged, but God is leading us all to that blessed hope. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's that's the whole point. I mean, I mean, you know, again, we we have grown so deafened to God that he has to shout now. You know, but 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 really look. Look at how we were going. Was there any hope? I mean, America has just gotten worse. Even under conservative administration, has gotten worse and worse and worse. We're at the edge now. And remember what I said that, you know, there's the window edge. And e even the election, I believe, is part of that, too. Yeah. We're on the edge. And so we more than ever must be praying, take this seriously. This is our moment. This is our prophetic moment. You know, now than ever. We have to rise to it. If we choose, if we make the wrong choice, if we choose the wrong way, this doesn't end well. I, I don't believe so. And I, I believe, I, I'm gonna, I, I believe that what we've seen, people say, okay, I believe it's not just that things are continuing. I believe the shakings and more shakings are not, it's not finished. Um, but God can bring revival. I believe we can yeah. see both. I believe, this event you're having in yeah. D.C., September 26th, yes. the return, yes. is it's, all about revival. It's all about that. But, but you cannot have revival without repentance. You know, you can't have the blessings of God in your life without repentance. Repentance is a great thing. But after 9-11, you know, we had all the, all the big things, the big shows on, but we didn't have any revival. We didn't have any return. We, I mean, we didn't have a repentance. Without repentance, there's no revival. And so we got worse. But, but, but listen, it begins with us. It begins with 
house of God. We, each, it, we have to say, Lord, I repent from anything in my life that shouldn't be there, I'm repenting. And whatever should be that's not, I'm repenting. It begins with us. When we come together in Washington, we're going to be repenting for the church first. Yeah. Then we're going to intercede for America and the nations, and we're going to sound the shofar and do all those things, you know, a prophetic moment. But that, but it's got to be that. And this whole time of, you know, coming up, this period when this probably will air, I believe is a critical time in the September and the autumn as we head into this time of trumpets and the, and the time of repentance on the biblical calendar. I believe it's going to be a critical time. I remember, Eric, that when I was a new believer, and, and I told, I'll give you a little hint, that everything was falling apart in America. Not like now, it's worse, but, yeah. but falling apart with the Carter and, and economy and the hostages in Iran, death to yeah. America. And they, we said, let's gather. We gathered it in Washington. If my people, if my people, if my people, pray, Lord, release the hostages, you know. And we all pointed our hands to the Capitol saying, put who you want there. Uh, a number of months later, revolution in the polls and Ronald Reagan came in and people were saying, listen, we got to come back to our biblical values. Ronald Reagan said, city on a hill. He's quoting John Winthrop. And he stood in the very spot where we were, we placed our hands. They changed the inauguration. So it was right there. And that same hour, they released the hostages and everything turned around. It was called morning in America, economy. Yes. But it, it turned around. It's not about politics, not about a man. Turn around as he had his hand on the Bible, was sworn in. Well, his hand was on a verse that it all hit, that America's history changed and the world's history changed. What was the verse? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, I will heal their land. Wow. It can happen again. I mean, my, my feeling is, I mean, you know, there's going to be dark, there's dark things coming, but there could be revival in the midst. In fact, we, we're praying for worldwide revival. You know, yes. we're all, we believe that there's also that. The end times aren't just bad. There's also world revival. And so we're praying for that. And, and we're praying, you know, whatever we can do, we repent here in America for the, for, for the world. So I believe there can be both things happening at once, even persecution and revival. God's bringing it back to the beginning, you know, like, Yes. Like, like, like in the in the days of Acts. I'll, I'll throw something in. You met, we mentioned John Winthrop. You know? Yes. Well, well, you know, you know, you know, he's the one who gave the warning. He gave, he said, you know, we'll be a city on a hill, and we are, we have been. Uh, and and he said, but if you don't, you know, these judgments are coming. Okay, he gave the warning. But but he actually built a city on. Uh, he built what he thought what we saw as a city on a hill, and that was Boston. Boston was the city that wow. he he governed. He was over Boston, and and that was his city. You know, and he lived there and died. And so, where did 9/11 begin? In Boston, yes. I mean Boston, where the city on the hill, where he gave the warning. But not only that, Winthrop was on an island. He had his own island right off of Boston, and and he prayed there and prayed, and and he lived there. He died, and but he prayed and he prayed for America. He prayed for this, um, and it was called Governor's Island because he was the governor. Okay, but where what happened to that island? It became Logan Airport, the place where 9/11 began. So it literally, from the warning, it's going to take, God's taking it back to the warning, saying, listen, guys, I'm calling you back. This is your chance. Return to me, and I will return to you, America. Return to me, says the Lord. He'll keep his word. Yes.